What's up guys? We are here today to introduce the uh, Zero Willpower Eating System. Um, in this video, we're going to show you, uh, we're going to kind of like take you behind the scenes and show you what we're actually going to eat this week. Yep. Uh, we're going to cook the food, show you how to cook all this food, uh, why we selected the foods that we did for the Zero Willpower Eating System, and you know, why it's important to, uh, to do things the way that we do it. Um, so, so Mike, can you start us off? Can you tell us, like, wh why did you create this whole thing? Why not just like copy some someone else's diet? Um, can, can you talk about the shortcomings of other diets and why you think this is better? Uh, well, to keep it pretty simple, uh, the zero willpower eating system is cheap. You know, yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, a lot of people think uh, healthy foods or eating healthy costs a lot of money, and it really doesn't. It's cheap. It's convenient, and uh, it tastes good, yeah. and it saves time. So it's uh, perfect for guys like us. Exactly, yeah, and I think that's key because, I mean, there are so many diets out there where, you know, like, theoretically they would work if a, per if a person could actually follow it, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, there's so many problems, like, uh, like we were checking one out, uh, you know, uh, like a few hours ago where, yeah. uh, like, all the, it gave a bunch of recipes where you would have to cook every meal and spend, like, two yeah. hours preparing it. Yeah, I mean, I took a while for me just to study it to try to learn how to cook it, and then yeah. afterwards I got one meal. And then uh, what about the other meals I'm going to eat through that day? You know, I mean, that just doesn't work out. Exactly. If I wanted to, to learn how to cook, I'd go to a cooking school and I'd do something else. But, <laughs> yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd do it to... I do it to stay lean and to stay healthy. Yeah. And basically, you know, another problem we were talking about is that a lot of these diets were actually, you know, mainly designed for women yeah. uh, who enjoy cooking typically a lot more than us yeah. um, and who like cooking every meal. But, you know, this is something where once you cook the meals for the week or, you know, we can have whatever you do, that's pretty much all you have to do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so let's, let's talk about um, some of the rules for... Uh, for nutrition and for eating, uh, I know you have like five rules which you've really emphasized to me, which are you know super important, like the uh, the commandments of nutrition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what would you say that those are? It's uh, it's, it's basically like five guidelines. Yeah. And the reason why it's uh, five guidelines is because you know a lot of times you're out there and you're eating, you're like, I don't know if this is good, or this is bad, and it gets all confusing. You're reading labels and stuff like that. So, uh, to keep it simple, the zero willpower eating system consists of five rules. If you remember these, you're you're set. So rule number one. Uh, all meals need to have protein and carbs. And uh, I know you may not be able to see from the camera here, but uh, if you see everything on here, everything consists of just meals of uh, protein and carbs. The reason why it's like that is because protein is needed to build muscle and uh, carbohydrates is needed to, uh, for energy. And so uh, every meal consists of it. Now, also, meals need to have a little bit of fat, but the reason I didn't put it as a guideline is because, uh, as you uh, probably all know, most people have a hard time eating uh, less fat. So it's one of those things you're going to get into your, uh, get into your diet anyways. Uh, but meal number t uh, no, uh, guideline number two is uh, all meals need to be uh, low in calories, fat, and sugar. And so this way uh, we talk about being low but not no, which means you can't eat calories, you can't eat fat, and you can't eat sugar. You just got to minimize it. Uh, rule number three is all meals need to be the size of one and a half times your fist. Um, so if you look down at your hands, uh, you'll see uh, my hands are medium size, and uh, one and a half times of your fists would be the portion size, so this way it kind of regulates the amount of calories you eat. Now, for us guys that have, I guess, big hands, <laughs> um, you know, maybe you can just go with uh, one fist instead of uh, one and a half. But on average, you know, one and a half is a pretty good portion size. I think that one is especially key because I know a lot of diets that involve like counting calories and like weighing. Oh no, it's it's just not practical for the real. Yeah, I, I don't have the time to count calories, <laughs> and yeah, it doesn't work out. Um, rule number four is you need to eat about four to five times a day, and reason why you need to keep your metabolism going. But if you, uh, a lot of guys um, I heard found, you know, always ask me, like, Mike, you know, I don't have a, you know, I don't really even, not that hungry. You know, I can't really eat four or five times. I have a hard time eating three, you know. And they'll find that if you decide to, if you actually follow rule number three and you eat the portion size that you're supposed to, about a fist and a half, you'll get hungry in a couple hours. So you don't really have to try to eat, uh, you know, four to five times. Just as long as you follow the first three rules, number four, you'll end up being hungry and need to eat four to five times anyways. Uh, the last rule is basically the 80-20 rule, which means 80% follow the rules, you know, eat healthy, and the 20% you can uh, pretty much kind of eat whatever you want. And this is, uh, it works out because there's a lot of social events, there's a lot of times where you want to relax and, uh, you know, you want to get some drinks, you want to go out, hang out with your buddies, go to happy hour. And, uh, you know, we're not robots, you know, we still have fun, we still, you know, eat some of the foods we like. And so um, that's why 20% uh, of your foods are pretty much whatever you like. Uh, just keep in mind, though, if you go over 20% or you cheat too much, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt your diet.
but again, you know, we do it like that, so it creates like a balance. Yeah, and I think that's key too because I know a lot of people when they first get real gung ho about their diet, they try to get like a hundred percent. Yeah, and then, you know that works for like two weeks, but then after that, they lose willpower and it's. And then they're like a hundred percent of uh, junk foods. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all or nothing type of thing. So we want to create like balance. Yeah, I think yeah, that's like the key to the whole system, just to like really minimize the amount of willpower you need. I mean, yeah. you were talking about to, to, about this to me before, where yeah. you know, obviously you still need some, but compared to other diets, this is so much less. Right. Exactly. Okay. So um. Let's talk about how this all works, how this all like comes together. Um, what exactly should a meal consist of? How do you assemble one of these meals? Uh, well, this will go into uh, our zero willpower eating system because the way you assemble your meals is the system basically makes it easy, uh, easy for you to eat your meals, uh, easy for you to uh, carry it around with you because a lot of times uh, you'll find out that if you look at the majority of the times that you're actually uh, eating the bad foods, you're going out to eat, it's usually during lunch and it's uh, usually during dinner. Uh, a lot of people we find uh, seem to skip breakfast. But with the eating system, the way you assemble it is you create, uh, you uh, get Tupperwares and you create a system to where every meal needs to have the protein and carbs and you simply go ahead and prep your meals beforehand. And there's uh, ways to do it to where you can keep your food warm constantly without a microwave or without anything. And we can get into that a little, a little later. But basically, it's pretty simple. All you do is just prep your meals, and then you go ahead and bring it with you to work or wherever you go throughout the day. And this way, you have it available. And it actually works out really good because, A, if you don't uh, go out to eat and spend all this money, you end up saving money. So it works for guys who uh, want to be cheap or want to save money, right? I mean, I, you know, I'm not cheap, but I don't want to spend you know, tons of money on food all the time. I'd rather spend it on uh, drinking all that 20% <laughs> or, or uh, you know, other stuff. Um, but also it's convenient because you, know, you don't have to go out and uh, buy food and come back or think, uh, you know, what am I going to eat this meal, what am I going to eat this meal. And also at the same time, it uh, works perfect for uh, lazy guys because uh, <laughs> if I want food, I want it right now. I don't want to go ahead and uh, drive out, get dressed, drive out somewhere and, uh, and order and then wait for the waiter to come and bring me my food. It's like, I mean, if I want food, I want food like right now. And uh, most of the time uh, with the eating system, uh, with it being Tupperware, all you do is just take it out of the fridge or take it out of a place that you put it in and uh, stick it in the microwave and two minutes you're eating. Yeah. So makes it uh, perfect. I, I think like the real genius of the system is that it actually uses your laziness to your advantage rather than right. having it to be something you fight against. Because right. I know um, ever since you showed me this and I started using it, I got so used to like the instant gratification of eating like two minutes after like, yeah. I was hungry that I don't really want to order pizza anymore because I don't want to wait 20 minutes. I want it now. And that like you exactly. We never have to plan to, uh, okay, I I'm going to eat in an hour. What should I do? And where should yeah, I go? Yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. It's just I'm food. I'm, I'm hungry. I eat. That's exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and with the cost too, like, you know, because I got so used to this, you know, spending uh, you know, 10 or 12 bucks on a meal seems yeah. like absurd to me. <laughs> I really don't even want to do it. So my cheapness also works to my advantage. Right. Um, and I know it, it like, really revolutionized, re revolutionized my diet because, uh, you know, even after I started working out, I struggled with uh, the diet a lot. Yeah. And I yeah. would, like, be very inconsistent. But this, like, really changed things for me and uh, made, me, made me very consistent with my diet. Um, so let's dive into it. Uh, so can you explain uh, what we have over here, the proteins? Uh, what should guys look for in a quality protein to put into uh, the Tupperware for the Zero Willpower System? And uh, why did we select the proteins that we did here? Uh, well, with proteins, basically you want to look for is following uh, rule number two, low in fat, low in calories, and uh, low in sugars. And uh, most proteins don't really have a lot of sugar, but you want to make sure on the calories and on the fats. So uh, what we have here is... Uh, let's start off with the front. So we have uh, beef top sirloin, or basically uh, sirloin. We have the thick cuts, which is about, uh, it's almost about an inch thick. And we have the thin cuts here. Uh, the reason why I picked these is uh, they have a little bit of fat, but it's lower than fat than a lot of the beefs. Um, and over here we have uh, salmon. We have uh, tuna. Uh, over here is pork. This is the pork uh, sirloin tips. And we have uh, ground beef here. And with ground beef, what we picked here was actually uh, 97.3, uh, but I think they have 96.3. What that means is 96% uh, of, of pure beef and 4% fat. Uh, be careful on that because a lot of times you can go out to the grocery store and you'll find those uh, cheaper uh, ground beefs that are like uh, you know dollar something a pound, but they're you know they're all like you know but majority fat. You know they're like a 73.27 or something like that. 73% beef and 27% fat. So it may be a little cheaper, but you're buying you're paying for the fat. Yeah. Um, so 
chicken breasts, that's always a classic. And uh, sirloin tip, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, pork, uh, pork center loin chop. I'm reading off the little tag here. So, but uh, chose these, uh, chose this and uh, the pork here is because uh, these are really lean porks. And again, uh, you want to be careful that when you're picking out the meat, you're picking out the leaner ones. And so the pork, uh, the center loins and the center loin uh, tip are uh, pretty good choices for pork. Uh, we have eggs, we have uh, tuna, and uh, this is a uh, Starkiss, and Starkiss uh, tuna in water, not in uh, vegetable oil. And we did that so this way we can minimize the calories because uh, because when we have it in vegetable oil, it's a little extra calories. Uh, it does taste a little better, so you know keep that in mind. Uh, we have fat-free, no, I'm sorry, uh, low-fat cottage cheese. And on the low-fat cottage cheese, you can actually find it in fat-free. We didn't find it this time in the grocery store, but they do have it there. So it's a little lower in calories, too. And uh, also, the other eggs we have is uh, egg beaters. So these are a little better than the egg whites, uh, just because they taste a little bit better. But definitely a good protein source, low in calories and fat. And uh, if we move on over here, we have another chicken breast. And this is actually something they sell at a lot of local grocery stores. And basically what it is, is it's a seasoned, it's pre-seasoned already. They have a whole bunch of flavors. And so it makes it really, really easy. I mean, you open it up, throw it on the grill, and that's it. Maybe three, four minutes, you're done. It's, uh, it's cooked. So let's cover some of the carbs. So we went over all the... Uh, uh, one thing before uh, we move on to carbs, I want to know, um, like we have a ton of stuff here just to show guys, but is this what you actually cook every week or is there... No, if, I no. To keep it simple, could you like... You, you could, but you know, again, like I was telling Dan, I, I like to keep things so simple. Okay. And so what, uh, when we decided to go ahead and uh, create this for y'all guys, I decided to get a couple extra meats just to kind of show a variety. But in actuality, though, I only use probably about one or two protein sources per week. And uh, just to do that so it simplifies things. If not, I have to cook everything separately. But, uh, but you can if you want. But again, uh, just kind of depending on your time you want to spend on it. Majority of the time, I just pick either a chicken breast to go for the week or go with uh, sirloin or go with uh, eggs or beef or something like that. Yeah, yeah I usually do... Uh... I like a little bit of variety, so I usually do three. Uh, what I've been doing lately is uh, chicken breast, which is kind of the staple, and then uh, beef, and then salmon. Yeah. And that, that way I never get bored. Yeah. But on the carbs, though, I do go with uh, usually one carb source for the entire week. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, it just kind of makes a match. Yeah. So kind of like all the carbs. <laughs> um, so let's go into the carbs. So we have whole wheat pasta. We have uh, brown rice, red potatoes, sweet potatoes, and also, oh, forgot. Oatmeal, definitely a good carb. Um, the reason why we chose these carbs are because these carbs are really easy to break down in your system. They're uh, low in a glycemic index, GI, and the reason why that's good is uh, to make it simple, it doesn't spike up your insulin, and if your insulin's too high, it goes into sugar, so basically it's good for you. But if you want to test out some of the other ones, you can, but if you stick to these, uh, you'll be on the safe side. You'll be good. Um. Okay, yeah, so can you talk about the, uh, the vegetables now? Uh, why did you pick these and uh, why are they important? Well, uh, basically on vegetables, most vegetables are, well, actually I think all, actually all vegetables are good for you. There's not really any, uh, any bad vegetables. The reason I kind of picked the ones that we went, to, uh, went through today is just because they're personally uh, my favorites. Uh, so we have uh, green beans, we have spinach, uh, carrots, asparagus, and uh, broccoli. So... But again, you know, you can go with other ones, but these are just some of the ones that I find are easy to cook and uh, I like eating them. So, yeah. So actually, so, um, so I know like a lot of guys don't really know exactly how to cook vegetables, um, but it's actually a lot simpler than people think. Uh, how are all these vegetables cooked? And uh, I, like, is it, is it difficult or is it something which any guy can do? Uh, the easiest way to cook it really, I just steam it. Yeah. I just steam it. Um, you can cook it any other ways, but again, uh, the eating system is meant to be simple. It's meant to be for uh, guys who don't really like to cook or know how to cook. And so I steam it, and uh, sometimes you may put a little bit of seasoning and a little salt and pepper. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Great. Okay, so um, so let's talk about the the final uh, ingredient to this whole thing, which makes the magic happen: uh, the Tupperware. Um, why do we put all our meals in Tupperware, and what is the advantage of you know uh, buying all the same Tupperwares like we do? Okay. Well, um, basically, remember the first uh, the first reasons. Uh, the first reasons why the zero willpower uh, eating system works. A, it's cheap. Um, B, it uh, works for uh, somebody who's lazy, don't like to cook. Uh, but C, it works for people who don't know how to cook. 
and the most important is it tastes good. Um, so with the Tupperwares, basically when you put your foods in Tupperwares and uh, you have it prepped and ready to go, it's, it uh, encourages you to eat the foods that you made instead of uh, going out to eat and grabbing something that, uh, that you know is not healthy for you. I mean, how many times you went out to eat and tried to look at the menu and look for the most healthiest thing, and it's kind of tough to find. So, but also, with, uh, be, with it being in Tupperwares, it makes it to where it's easy to eat healthy. Uh, you don't have to have willpower to, uh, to go into your fridge and just grab the food that's already made and prepped up for you. And you know that two minutes from now you can have uh, cooked and uh, you know, food ready for you. Uh, makes it convenient. So this way you don't have to go ahead and order out or make it a big deal every time you need. Yeah. And that's so important in, uh, in staying lean and uh, staying healthy. So that's why I created this system. And this is actually the way, uh, the way that I eat for, I think, about the last seven, eight years now. And it's worked out great. You know, man, it doesn't mean, <laughs> yeah, worked out great. And, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with eating. I don't, have, you know, because that's one of the biggest things for, uh, for somebody who wants to get lean and get healthy is, man, you know, I seem to always be cheating. And, uh, you know, I've been eating healthy for a week and suddenly I blew it in the weekend going somewhere or something like that. This system works for anybody. Yeah. You know, works for everybody. And I would say that's the biggest thing where, you know, I used to be that guy cheating all the time. But yeah. ever since I got this, this is like, you know, automatic consistency. Yeah. Because once, I mean, um, uh, like usually I do like cooking the meals uh, once a week about the right. same what you do. Yeah. And once, once you've cooked all this stuff and you cooked all your food for the week, I mean, you're not going to just let it go bad. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. And, and with the system, you only have to cook usually about once a week or, uh, or at the most maybe about once every uh, four to five days. Yeah. Which means you don't have to worry about uh, spending time uh, washing pots and pans and uh, seasoning and stuff like that. I mean, the amount of time people spend cooking is usually about one to two hours a day. You know, I mean, you imagine that times that by seven days. I mean, you literally save anywhere from seven to 14 hours, you know, and you're able to eat healthier and save money. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. So, so um, about how much time will it take you to cook all your food for the week? Usually, um, this really depends on how, how uh, diverse you get on the different types of food you want to eat. Personally, for me, uh, most of the time I go with uh, one protein source, maybe up to two protein sources, and uh, one carb source. So I would say, including uh, washing the pots and pans I use, uh, maybe about two hours. Yeah, that's a huge uh, difference. And then, and then, I'm, a then I'm set for five days, <laughs> yeah. so I don't mind at all. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, so one final thing which I wanted to discuss before we close this out, uh, which I think might be the most ingenious part of this whole system, is uh, uh, how does somebody like bring this stuff uh, to work, or like if they're traveling somewhere, like how can they bring this away from their house and still eat healthy? Well, this is something, uh, and it took me a little while to kind of figure this out, because uh, you know when you have the Tupperwares and you're going to bring it with you, it's sometimes hard to kind of carry it around, you got to look for a microwave and things like that. So what we created is, what you do, I'll, I'll go ahead and show it to you. I don't have it with me right now. But uh, what you do is you get a small cooler. You know, it's usually about, I, the one I use is about this big. And you go ahead and heat up your Tupperwares in the morning, you know, when you wake up for work. And usually what I do is I heat up about five Tupperwares. You know, and, I, and it doesn't take much at all because you take them out of the fridge. You throw them in there. And I usually heat it for about 10 minutes, uh, maybe up to about 12 minutes or so. And I go ahead and take a shower and do all that stuff. And I also heat up water, you know, in a kettle. And then so in about uh, 10 minutes, the water's boiling and the, uh, the food's ready. And what I do is I pour the water into a hot water bottle. And I cap the water bottle, I put it into the cooler, and I take the food out and I put it into the cooler. And then I lay a towel over the entire thing and I close the cooler up. And it's so simple, and it took me a little while to figure it out, but what that actually does is it keeps your food hot. You know, for uh, usually up to my last meal, uh, which is about about 10 hours after, is room temperature. But every other meal before that is hot, and it's it, it's awesome. You don't have to find a microwave. You don't have to go ahead and uh, and have someone heat it up all the time. I mean, it literally saves you a lot of time, and it's more convenient because for guys that are out there that are uh, you don't have a, a fridge or to go to, or you don't have a place to store your food, you don't have a place to heat your food, you may be on the go, right? There's a lot of people that are on the go, always in the cars or traveling everywhere. It's, it's perfect for you. And uh, at the same time, you don't have to waste money stopping by stores and buying food all the time. It's already there for you. Yeah. I, I put uh, forks in there and uh, you're all set, totally mobile.
And I think that's that's ingenious because you know you have great food that tastes good, is yeah. hot instantly, yeah. and is good for you. And I, I know for me, like uh, that used to be like one of the big problems there is like when I used to uh, go into the office at my old job, where you know I go in there and I have nothing to eat. There's just fast food places all around. Right. Uh, if I, if I did bring in something, it would be like something cold that you know I don't really want to eat, and it was just like. So difficult to eat healthy, but yeah. that makes it so much easier. I ran into the same problem, and this one time I worked at this place where I didn't have a break room. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I literally went the first week and a half. I mean, just eating crap all day long, and I was sitting there figuring out, like, man, how do I, you know, how do I get these tubwares hot? Yeah. And it's like I can bring the tubwares, but I know how to keep it cold, or uh, you know, if I heat it up, it, you know, it gets uh, it gets warm within about like two hours, and then by the third hour, you know, it's cold already. And so it took me a while to figure it out, but yeah, it works out great. Great. Okay. Um, so that's basic, the basics of the zero willpower eating system you can see here. Uh, this is all the food that we're going to make. Um, check out the next video and we'll show you how to actually cook this stuff.